Hi guys and gals, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and uh, I'm out with a clone today on Saturday. And it's Saturday the 22nd of March, and as I say, um, I'm in with a clone that you might have actually noticed with two pairs of feet. I was wondering who it was, and it's Darren Funky Prepper. He's got to stay there all weekend holding the tarp up for me, yeah. so he's been doing some really strong arm training for this event. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're just about to get the old fire going and I uh, found a bird's nest that dropped out of a tree over there. So Daz is going to strike it up. Yeah. We're running at a time and it's getting dark, so rather than fanning around doing it the natural way, we're going to cheat because uh, preppers are allowed to cheat. And it's not a problem. <laughs> We're going to be using one of these fire dragons. Straight away. Yep. I think we're good. Here we go. Let's put the blade away. Firewood ready. Just doing the old natural fire lighting, but it's getting dark and we're really hungry and we know how long it takes to get a good fire going, so we'll save some training for another day. I think. But in the meantime, I think we're, we're going to be fine, don't you? We're pretty good out there now. Yeah, Daz was saying we just need to get the old fire going, get some grub on the go. We've got some really decent food, but I'll give you a close up of that in a moment. Yummy. Wait till you see this. Stuffed peppers with bulgar wheat and rice, onions, a bit of seasoning, and then underneath there you can see are the skewered boar, wild boar meat. There's a kangaroo steak. What I did was I, I sprayed them with antibacterial spray that you use on uh, work surfaces and on each one and then I douched them with a bit of water so they stay damp and then kept them in this plastic bag and then of course it's for hygiene for uh, you know sort of dirty hands with the food that sort of thing. A brew? Yeah I'll have a brew. Right let's get up. It's getting so cold out here, you won't <laughs> believe it. Look at that, it's minus 29. <sighs> Look how yeah, we're... It's uh, freezing up, man. <laughs> I, think I think we'll survive. Get that fire going, brother. <laughs> we were just talking about cameras um, malfunctioning. You know, you're sort of filming something and then for some reason something short circuits in the little digital mechanism and it switches off and you end up talking to yourself, literally. And uh, Darren's just wondering why that thermometer was showing. 20, minus 29. <laughs> yeah. I think what it is, it's the clone vibes of me and Darren. Similarities. That they're just everything's trying to malfunction and throw us because while we're together and we've got this dual power, which obviously anything mechanised or automated doesn't want us to have. So, uh, yeah. See the come back with Yeah, and Daz was just saying compasses just keep going around in circles so they don't stay stationary. So it's just something when our energies get together. <laughs> it's not having it. <laughs> It's some sort of synergy that happens when we're out in the woods, but we've got that fire going and uh, once we get the coals going, they'll go under there and then uh, start okay, cooking Dan's the food. Okay, just made us a brew, heated up some, boiled up some water in his uh, canteen cup. Then we halved the water and just made a brew and I put some in my mug. But say he's, um, we're just chilling by the fire, it's coming up to about 7.30, so of course now it's actually got properly dark. But there you can see there's the kebabs little uh, recess where I sort of just you can see my torch so I'm drawing the actual recess where it is and then we've got the main flank of the fire there and then any coals that we need where you can see the torch again we just move it in and uh, you can see the old um, 
wild boar with mushrooms and onions, yumminess skewered, will be ready to eat very <laughs> soon. And then in the foil pouches, we've got um, the stuffed peppers, which we're going to put sort of Str strategically placed. Yeah. As Funks just said, strategically placed around sort of the edge, but we can still build the fire up. So, um, yeah, it's a really mild evening. It was predicted to be sort of pretty rainy. Um, we had a very, very light downpour. Well, it wasn't even a downpour, it was just a sort of sprinkling. And... Okay, so about 15, 20 minutes have gone by, and you can see now the skewers with the mushroom onion and the meat are virtually all done now, really looking tasty. And then what we decided to do was put the four wrapped peppers on top of some flames, because we did actually have them around the coals, so say where the torch is just there. But it would have taken too long to cook, so Darren sort of stocked up the wood a bit, so they can really cook well. Because what would be pucker is to actually eat the stuffed peppers pucker peppers at the same time as having the skewered meat so that's what we're endeavouring to do so as the actual coals have actually died down there the meat is virtually cooked on the skewers but the coals are now keeping it warm without overcooking it or drying it out so and then by the time where Daz has blown that up a little bit we've got some sort of flames underneath which will cook through because the peppers are raw um, so I reckon those will be done within about 10 to 15 minutes and it's going to be some really decent scoff. You see where Daz has picked up the uh, peppers. The flames are just underneath it without really scorching or turning it into a oh, spot. Look at that, it's all starting to steam. Mm. Then we'll do a final test of the uh, skin of the peppers and the flesh. And then when they get a bit soft and floppy, we know it's all cooked through. And we know also that the buckwheat and the rice stuff in filling is also um, heated up. Although we were thinking of it maybe eating them raw, um, which the peppers would have been raw, but of course not the filling. We thought, no, we want it warm. That's why we come out, light up the fire, prepped all this food at home. We could have done it outside. So we're now chomping on the old um, skewered meat. Red peppers are done. Yellow peppers are done and the green peppers are done. So as it's green it's all go and we're getting some calories down our throat. So the meat is, um, it's the first time I've had wild boar. I've had kangaroo before but we're much we're going to have that later on. Mm. Um, but we just decided just to have the, the skewers. How cool and is that? Peppers. Spot on, isn't it mate? Yeah. Wow. Primitive eating, straight off the skewer. Nice one. Scratch and sniff screen, bring it on. Okay guys and girls, we've shown you the half moon through the branches of the trees, so we've been absolutely blessed with the weather. Clear sky, we still see the stars. It was predicted or scheduled to prospect. It's to be rainy weather, breeze, nearly sort of sub-zero temperatures and we're down to between two degrees to naught which has been fine but the fire's kept us warm just take you into the, the fire pit is douched it down a bit spread over the ashes so it, it's easier for it to um, cool down and we're not going to use it tomorrow we're just going to douche it with any leftover water but it's about three o'clock in the morning we had a right old chin wag sat down put the wells to right it's having a talk just um, really sort of passing the time and really enjoying ourselves in the great outdoors. We actually took the tarp that covered the fire pit, we took that corner off along this side and we sort of, if you imagine, we sort of wrapped it over the other side, sort of over there, that direction. So the um, draft of the smoke went straight up through the gap where the tarp is now, but we've just placed it back. So I'll show you where uh, Funky is in a moment, Darren. Let's say we got the, the uh, fire pit tarp back up so that in the morning, if it does rain, we've got working space underneath to just have a central point and then that could be the last thing to strike. But there's Daz in his sleeping bag. That's just zipping himself up underneath his tarp. Some of the netting we've still got. And then on the other side is my tarp. Kash is somewhere underneath the sleeping bag. 
and then I'm ready to turn in and all set up ready to sleep here. I'm going to turn in now and catch you in the morning. Okay, it's a simple pancake which I've pre-made at home just to save all the hassle of uh, bringing some sort of water or milk to mix up with the mixture. But as you can see, it's um, it's a little pancake there just to heat up on the little circular frying pan. Daz has got his. Got some maple syrup to go with it to pour on it. Nice, yeah. Can you taste the walnuts? Spot on. Yeah, I put quite a few in them. Well, so I made those at home previously, so it was just convenient just to just heat them up again so it's just nice and warm but we've just had two scotch eggs eat which is hard boiled egg wrapped in sausage meat and then covered in breadcrumbs and then sort of baked or cooked in any way then they were cold but we ate them two of them each and now we're just having the pancakes it's sort of late morning now there's a bit of cloud coming over the top of us it might rain a little bit but hopefully just turn that pancake over Hopefully it shouldn't affect us too badly. We uh, kept the fire pit tarp up, so when we strike down, when Daz finishes and uh, is ready to sort of pack up his basher, and then my basher, we can clear up, put everything just there, and then the final thing to take down will be the uh, fire pit shelter. So we've got some good practical space here, just to potter about. If it does rain, the wind's kicking up a little bit. It's not too cold. Tiny little patterings on the tarp of little droplets of rain, but. Hopefully it won't be a heavy downpour, um, but say we've been really lucky with the weather that we've had so far. <laughs> so in here now we've got some small little house stones coming down. It's the first real shower we've had since we've been out from trekking into the woods, pitching up our tarps, bashers, fire pit, shelter and what have you. It's the heaviest downpour we've had and it just started about a minute ago. It might stain for the rest of the day and might hopefully blow over, so watch this space hopefully without us being too wet. Okay guys and girls, the uh, hail's just little tiny pellets of hail, a mini little storm that just kicked in just now, so that's just eased off. Okay, you see what I put on here, one of the D-rings, it's already fixed to the uh, rucksack. Got a utility pouch, which as you can see has got a spring type carabiner which that's locked in and I've got another carabiner on part of the webbing there to take it up a little bit higher to then connect onto that D-ring so it stays a bit more solid rather than having that flap around freelance so with that bit of webbing that's just there the higher piece you can see the carabiners look through it and we'll sort of keep that flank of the back quite sort of solid against it and when I trekked into the wood there was no flapping or banging around or you know what you feel sort of resting on your back because you've got a bit of loose bit of kit because you've got a loose bit of kit that's sort of banging around on the back of your rucksack so that worked out but you can see I've got two other D-rings here on this rucksack which I could utilise other things horizontally across there and across there um, but mainly on the vertical because obviously unless there's something in there which I've got my uh, one litre water canteen easy access to get to it rather than actually put it in the rucksack um, You've got those D-rings for extra bit of use. And you've seen from previous videos how I've, uh, where I've put all my sort of sleep kit and my clothing and food on top. So, well, I thought I'd just add that because it's the first time I've actually not used this. I've used this before, but not actually used it in situ with carrying some extra bits that I wanted easy access to, just like the pouches. But it's just sort of replicating another pouch, but taking it off and then I've got it mobile. And you can see the two D-rings on the actual pouch itself, which I've got a clip strap which I use and hang it on my person over my shoulder or something and just take it separate if that's all I wanted to take with me. So yeah, improed, modded bit of kit. So as you can see, I've taken down a tarp, which is rolled up down there. But what I do like to do is just set up, just be organized, know where all your stuff is so that when I'm ready, I'm going to pack it in that bag over there. Before I actually put it in the bag, I'll go through how I packed it in the bag. Um, so it's exactly the same routine of taking it out putting it back in. So it's all organised, so everything goes in. Same as the other stuff, I don't want to teach you to suck eggs, but you know, I've been through that before as well. As I said earlier, where my sleep kit is, where my clothing is, the food. You know, so you've always got a set routine. So it's sort of predicted 
and um, you can preempt where you're going to put everything. If you did have to get out in a hurry, then there's sort of no panic, and especially if it was in the dark and all you got is a head torch, you don't really bring attention to yourself or anything like that. You know where the stuff is, and you can just do it on automatic pilot. So, next bit you'll see is when we LNT, because we've got to do the fire pit yet, and put that in as we've douched that down with recycled water and anything else we could find, and that's well cold and damp now. See, we've uh, cleared up, so a long shot from where we've been. As always, leaving no trace. So we will douche the fire pit, scarified it over, and um, ready to pack up now and go somewhere over there. You right, doggy? Got your little plastic, improvised plastic bag, waterproof. Cut a hole, sealed it there, although the plastic didn't break, we just reinforced it. And then a little bit of gaffer tape underneath just keeps it in place. Improvised plastic bag, <laughs> last minute arrangement because uh, I couldn't find a waterproof coat, so that'd do the job and it's doing the job. So, what me and Darren Funky Prepper did was just meet up for the 24 hours purely to sit around a campfire till about three in the morning talking about things and eating the skewered meat, the wild boar filling. But we'd have a late night snack. Um, we put some jacket potatoes on the fire coals a little bit later on from about midnight and they cooked through and then when we were a bit peckish again we had those and Darren knocked up some pasta in his canteen cup on the uh, flames of the fire, boiled that up without having to strike up any stoves although we did use those this morning for um, making a brew and just heating up those pancakes so that <laughs> <laughs> Some bloke just fell out of the trees, I don't know where he carved, looking for his parachute <laughs> We just had the crack outdoors, say so just enjoying the outdoors, a few technical things that we've sort of maybe included or bits of info, but it was mainly just to show the experience of meeting up and this was um, long due. I'm returning all the invites when we've been to his woods, we did the Christmas dinner at the end of 2013 uh, in the woods down his territory. So he's come to my neck of the woods and uh, yeah we've had a really good time outdoors. Cheers lads. <laughs> now we've got to get that on our backs, well on my back. I wish it could go on Darren's back as well, and he could have both of them. And I'll just give him a guided tour of how to get out of the woods. <laughs> Here's the ditch and mound that I included in the uh, Hoops Bivy video that I did previously. Just going down the ditch here. There's all the big mound over there, and to the other side. So that's a good deterrent, and all these sort of fallen trees around here as well. So the chances of anyone coming round here is, uh, again, you know, you've got our solitude, our privacy, the objective of meeting up in the woods. A relaxed time out in nature, which is what it's all about. Thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest and uh, catch up with you in another video soon. Cheers, take care.